Welcome, foolish mortals, to another episode of the Hitchhiking Host Show. I am your host, your ghost host, (laughs) West Truth, and I'm back this week with another episode. Before we get started, I want to say happy holidays to everybody because this is the last time I'll see you before Christmas, Uh, probably. Maybe I'll throw in a Hitch Host 101 somewhere this week, somewhere, we'll see. But, um... Anyway, happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy whatevs, in case you're one of those. (laughs) But, um, so this week we have a lot of news. Uh, I have my Star Wars The Force Awakens review for you all, in case you didn't see it on my other channel, The A-List. Go subscribe to my other channel. It's youtube.com slash westsida515. Do it. Um, As well as the newest park news um, from the past couple weeks. So... Uh, let's get to moving. (laughs) Luke Skywalker has vanished. His sister, now known as General Leia, has sent her best X-Wing pilot, Poe, to the planet of Jakku, where information of her, where her brother might be, can be found. Poe ends up getting involved in a battle with members of what is left of the Empire, now known as the First Order. The pilot puts the info in his droid, BB-8, to get the info back to the General. Along the way, the droid meets up with a scavenger named Ray and a supposed resistance hero, Finn. The gang ends up teaming up with Han Solo and Chewbacca and running from the First Order and villain, Kylo Ren. So what did I think of Star Wars The Force Awakens? I thought it's an awesome sci-fi sequel. The original trilogy of films are my favorite movies of all time, and like most, I was disappointed with a lot of the prequel series. I'm so pleased to say this film gets things back on track. There are a number of fabulous action sequences, including spaceship chases, blaster shootouts, and of course a lightsaber battle or two. The film is never boring and is always entertaining. There's also a lot more humor than uh, I expected, causing me to laugh more than most comedies this year. In fact, if you're a true fan, you'll most likely go through the ringer of emotions, being thrilled one second and then almost thrown into tears the next. The script may have some familiar elements and lots of throwbacks to the original series, which is never a bad thing, but still keeps things fresh enough to work. It was great seeing the new characters interacting with the old guard, and it really makes for a perfect blend. As terrific as it is to see the older characters together once more, I was interested to see how I felt about the new cast. I was elated to discover how emotionally attached I became to them, especially Rey, who is probably now my favorite female heroine of all time. The cast star is Daisy Ridley as Rey. Oh yeah. (laughs) The young woman left on Jakku by her parents when she was young and had to learn to fend for herself and scavenge for a living. John Boyega as Finn, a former stormtrooper who realizes he can't do what he's forced to and joins the resistance. Adam Driver as Kylo Ren, the former Jedi turned to the dark side on a search for Luke, and Oscar Isaac as Poe Dameron, the hotshot pilot of the Resistance. Harrison Ford reprises his role as the legendary Han Solo, the smuggler who's in a very different place in his life than one might expect. Ford brings the magic of the character back to the, for the fans and looks to be having a blast. Carrie Fisher returns as General Leia, who's also dealing with a bad time in the past with Han, and Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, the Jedi Master who has gone into seclusion. Star Wars The Fork of Force Awakens may invoke feelings of glee to downright hatred between fans, but I felt it's a step in the right direction for the series, as well as my favorite movie of the year. I'm going to give it the rating of 
A-list approved. What do you expect? <laughs> it gets the A-list. Seal of approval. We've been talking about it for months, but if you're looking for an adventurous dinner at the Magic Kingdom, you can now officially eat at the Jungle Navigation Company Limited Skipper Canteen, which opened on December 16th for some world-famous jungle cuisine. You can enjoy tastes of Asia, South America, and Africa at this new 222 seat table service restaurant staffed by the wisecracking crew of the Jungle Cruise. Well, Jungle Navigational Company, whatever. There are three dining destinations within the company's headquarters turned restaurant. Hungry passengers may find themselves in the mess hall or the jungle inspired parlor once used by the company's founder. Dr. Albert Falls and his family. Behind the one uh, secret bookcase lies an additional dining room in a former meeting room of the mysterious Society of Explorers and Adventurers. This sounds pretty cool. <laughs> the Skipper Canteen touts an adventurous menu with some new and interesting dishes inspired by the exotic flavors of the rivers traveled on the Jungle Cruise. You can try head-on shrimp, or sustainable fish collar, or familiar tastes such as grilled steak, pork tenderloin, or chicken breast. House-made arepas with slow-cooked beef, black beans, tostones, and queso fresco. Remember, when we get a little too exotic, my pronunciation may be off like it normally is. <laughs> Dr. Fall's signature grilled steak. A strip loin marinated in sofrito and served with yuca planks, avocado, and house-made chimichurri. All right, then. Rice noodle bowl with an Asian faux broth with choice of chicken, dust breast, or tofu served with jalapenos and mixed of fresh herbs. Trader Sam's head-on shrimp, nice, with sustainable local farm-raised shrimp tossed in chili garlic sauce and served with Chinese broccoli and a choice of five grain or white rice. Coconut bar with pineapple basil, compote, and vanilla cream. Uh, Kungaloosh. <laughs> okay. This African-inspired chocolate cake is served with caramelized bananas and cashew caramel ice cream topped with coffee dust. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Little ones can try uh, Junior Skip's special mac and cheese inspired by an Egyptian dish with ground beef pasta, bacamel sauce, and house-made cheese gratin served with broccoli. Oh yeah, I'm sure little ones will love to hear that. Amazon Annie's house-made arapas with slow-cooked beef, black beans, and queso fresco served with yuca planks. Sizzling Savannah's grilled flank steak with steamed broccoli and fingerling potatoes, Smiley's little crock of chicken noodle soup, and the Kids Volcano. A gooey chocolate cake with caramel lava and exploding chocolate rocks will make your mouth shout, Why? <laughs> Alright. Um, yeah, I don't think I would like any of that stuff. I'd be going with the chicken breast. <laughs> <laughs> Two non-alcoholic specialties will be served. The Punch Lime Punch with tropical fruit juice and mango puree, also available with a spiced rim for the extra zenga. And the Schweitzer Slush with frozen apple juice and passion fruit topped with bursting green apple boba balls. Is that what uh, Boba Fett's crotch is called? Boba balls? <laughs> Legend has it, it was first concocted by the noted explorer and humanitarian, hum, humanitarian, humanitarian Dr. Albert Slush. Okay then, Disney Dining Plan is accepted, as well as Tables in Wonderland discounts. So I really like this idea of the whole restaurant. The menu, I'm, I don't get too exotic when it comes to the menu. Um... I go with stuff I know because that's what I know I like, and I'd be afraid if I get something too out there, I'd be like, oh god, this is horrible, and I just spent a dining credit on it. So I would probably go with something that I know. Um, but I mean, if you guys out there like to try different stuff, um, by all means, try whatever the heck you want. It's your life. I mean, I'm not telling you don't go here. but. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know that I would be too quote-unquote adventurous with the menu, we'll say. But the restaurant itself sounds pretty cool. 
While we're talking about the area, another roaming characters test is going on at the Magic Kingdom that could be added to Adventureland. Unnamed pirate characters have been roaming the area outside of the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction over the past few days, stopping to talk and interact with guests, but not taking pictures or order signing autographs. Yeah, they're snobs. <laughs> it is unknown how long the pirates will continue to roam, but they are right now, at least. Um, so, uh, I like these roaming character experiences. It brings a little more excitement to the stuff, I guess. So, I, I, I could see how it would work. So, um, yeah, why not? <laughs> Alright, um, now let's talk about something new. Uh, that you, I'm sure you've, if you have have Disney stuff on your Facebook, certain websites or whatever, uh, the Hitchhiking Ho Show, we don't flood you with news. We give it to you here because I don't need to flood everyone's profiles with news you already know and then you get sick of it. So, new security measures have come to the major theme parks, which also include Universal and SeaWorld that include guests to walk through metal detectors, undergo wand searches, and abide by several rule changes. Um, the most notable of the rule changes at Disney parks include a ban on toy guns property-wide. They cannot be sold or bought in the park, so even like the Buzz Lightyear guns have been pulled. And the prohibition of costumes for all guests over 14. So no more costumes allowed for anyone over the age of 14. Which I know some people like to dress up in the parks and whatnot, but um, the biggest point of concern with that is whether people will be able to dress up for Mickey's not so scary Halloween party once that comes. But Disney's confirmed via Twitter that as of right now, adult costumes are not allowed for any reason at the park. So uh, maybe they'll see their attendance go down for the Halloween party. I can see a lot of people not going because they're not able to dress up out of spite. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, I've never dressed up for any reason in a park. I mean, it's too hot. <laughs> Just wear a t-shirt and shorts. That's, you know, like a normal person. But, you know, whatever. Just, if you like want to dress up like a princess, just buy like a princess shirt or something, you know? Just dress up. Role play in the bedroom, people, really. <laughs> anyway, for fans of Big Hero 6... Here's some good news for once. <laughs> Baymax has returned to Walt Disney World in all new meet and greet area at Epcot. Earlier this week, Disney unveiled a newly expanded character spot location in an unused corner of what used to be Interventions West. This is expected to be a permanent meet and greet, so those who didn't get the opportunity to fist bump with Baymax, now you have another chance. Yes, um... And I, I, I missed the opportunity to meet Baymax. Um, he, the movie, I, I think by like a day, I think I missed him, unfortunately. But, um, you know, now uh, we have the chance. I, I like Big Hero 6. I love the character of Baymax, so I would definitely check it out. Earlier this year, it was announced that Kilimanjaro Safari's attraction would be getting two new species as part of its transition into both a daytime and nighttime version. Hyenas debuted inside this attraction several weeks ago, and now a pack of six painted dogs have now joined the lineup. These dogs are unique to Africa and are among the continent's most endangered species. Painted dogs are easy to spot on the savanna as they have oversized ears and unique multicolored coat patterns. Drivers are not currently stopping the vehicle to observe these animals or talk about them with guests as they're still receiving training in regards to these new animals. So they don't want to be like, oh, check out that thing. It's, uh, it's a buzzer 59. <laughs> and you'll be like, huh? You know, uh, they like to have long walks on the beach and uh, drink Cosmos and uh, yeah. So that's why they don't talk about them right now. Uh, <laughs> but um, obviously, once they get to know more about these animals, they will talk about them. So you might be like driving by and be like, whoa, 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 whoa what was that? <laughs> uh, just keep in mind, they are the painted dogs. Also, Cali River Rapids at Disney's Animal Kingdom is scheduled to close for just over a month in early 2016 to complete its annual maintenance refurbishment. The attraction is set to close on January 5th and will remain shut through February 11th, reopening to guests on February 12th, 
2016. Um, you know, I've only ever been on Kali River Rapids once. Um, it get I don't I don't remember getting that wet, but I was sort of like, oh, I'll go on again, like uh, my in the last few years when I was there, and. Um, I'm like, I don't remember getting that wet. And then I saw people coming off drenched. I'm like, well, I don't have a change of clothes, so I'm not going to go on. Um, but, I mean, a lot of people like Kali River Rapids. Um, you know, like, I, the first time I was on it was was 2000, I believe. And that was the last time I was on it. So, um, you know, it is what it is. All right, well, that's the show for this week. I'll be back next week. Uh, and we'll have a whole... Well, no, there'll be one more show, and then it'll be a new year. So, um, look, everybody look out for that. Look out for a new Hitchhiking Host 101 up soon, and maybe a special surprise. Maybe a Disney Parks vlog coming soon, huh? Yeah, I think that sounds good. So anyway, uh, until next time, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Hitcho Show. You can like the show on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Hitcho Show. Follow the Twitter and the Instagram at Hitcho Show. And if you're listening to the show or you want to listen to the show, you can do so on Podbean. It is hitchoshow.podbean.com or you can download it on iTunes or Stitcher. Until next time, don't forget to... Hurry back. <laughs> Hurry back. Be sure to bring your Sandy Claw sack. For the next episode... See ya.